Brought to you by StationHouseCoffee.com and InspiredDisorder.com slash Ting. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality. Impractical Jokers, the TV show, specifically the TV show. I've talked about the movie in the past, past episode. I did not like the movie. However, I do like the show. And finally, I've been able to binge the show, uh, which has been kind of a standard operation survival technique during this pandemic is to find a show to binge. And it has to be a show that's lighthearted, feel good, and uh, just recently got access to HBO Max. And they have uh, the first four or five seasons of Impractical Jokers on there. It's normally a true TV uh, program, but um, they have a bunch on 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 the Max. And they have the other. I think they have other like spinoff uh, versions of the show, like the Inside Joke version. I don't know. I'm just going through the normal episodes, and definitely a show that is perfect for background watching uh, because there's no like storyline or whatever. It's basically Jackass without. The, the concussions and contusions and uh, physical damage that was taken. But it's a, a bunch of friends having fun, uh, playing jokes on each other. And, chal- I mean, this one's uh, challenging their friends to do crazy things out in public uh, to each other or to people that are out in public, uh, which I enjoy. It's like a, a prank show, but most of the time the pranks are are self-inflicted it's it's really like stepping out of your comfort zone and uh being embarrassed uh because they don't really fuck with people too much i mean they do here and there but you know that they would have to sign a waiver and stuff so it's fun it's fun thing and i enjoy the show it's been i've only seen like you know, you go into like a, a a liquor store or whatever, and they may have impractical jokers on. I mean, it's it's a perfect show for like a a place like that where you can just kind of while you're waiting in line, you can look up and almost watch a whole skit or whatever, a whole segment. Um, and it's quick. I mean, there's episodes are short also, but uh, I really enjoy it. It's just especially during a pandemic. It's it's fun i mean it's it definitely makes me laugh it's uh, one of the shows that uh i've probably laughed the hardest and it seems like they've gotten funnier uh i've only watched i think uh i may be on season three right now i skipped season one because i believe that's on netflix already and i've seen it so i started with season two and there's like 38 episodes per season so it's it's a slow moving and they have I think they've done up to eight seasons right now, and I'm sure it's a show that might... It'll be interesting to see this show if or when it ever comes back because being able to do a lot of these pranks and stuff in the the current climate of pandemic and social distancing and wearing masks, like there's just so little of this show that could still be created uh, today. So it'll be interesting to see how it comes back, when it comes back, if it comes back. Um, I'm sure it doesn't need to. I'm sure these guys are, have made tons of money just not only through the show, but like they do Impractical Jokers cruises where they go and they, they do. I would imagine they stand on stage and they just show each other like clips of things that they've done. I don't even know what a live stage version of the Impractical Jokers would be. I know there's a lot of comics, stand up comics that, that go on those cruises or at least did in the before time but uh i'm sure money wise these guys these four guys q sal joe and Murr, are uh set for life um but yeah it's great it's great to watch i i'm a huge fan sal Volcano is also a stand-up comic so he's been a guest on many podcasts that i'm a fan of uh like kill tony he's been a, a guest on there i want to say he's been on uh douglas movies too um but yeah, just a really fun. It's like these four these four guys who went to high school together, so they have a rapport with each other. They have like there's like inside jokes that they understand, which I you know there's probably I think inside jokes is literally one of the specials that that are out uh, like co- compilations of their their things. Um, but it's I don't know. It's like if it's, it's feel good entertainment. 
Because it's like, I've never really had, like, growing up, I never had a big group of friends. I mean, the closest would be uh, the group of friends that I played pickup basketball with in high school. Uh, but we didn't have the kind of, like, this kind of uh, friendship where we just, like, talk shit and make and challenge each other to do embarrassing tasks. Um, but I can live vicariously through these guys watching the show and uh it's just it's just so funny it just like in a time where dealing with stress and anxiety and depression uh during this pandemic is just is just like crippling at times it's just so nice to be able to put on a show like this that's you know you you don't have to follow any complex plot it's not like you're watching game of thrones you're just watching these four idiots do fun things and act like idiots in front of people. I love the challenges, too. Like, they do the, uh, I mean, it's, it's amazing how much they get away with, with just being confident. Um, I mean, just what, what anybody can get away with just being confident. From the, the, the challenges where they're doing, like, focus groups or they're doing challenges like they're in a grocery store and they have to, like, try and clip as many balloons to a person as they can, and the person who clips the most amount of balloons to a shopper wins. Um, just funny stuff like that. It's just... It, it, it's... It, it's just hilarious. It's like the, the, the types of challenges they do don't really change, but uh, just the, the back and forth and the, the kind of camaraderie they have and also competitiveness that they have is really fun. Um, and the show, I mean, the way the show's structured is kind of like a game show in a way where like they're, they're battling to see whoever loses the most amount, amount of challenges has to go through a punishment. And the punishments are fun, uh, usually kind of a personal punishment, like gauged to uh, the specific person losing. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes. Uh, I finally kind of understand more like in the movie which I did not like the movie. Uh, maybe I'll revisit the movie after I watch a bunch more of these episodes and I kind of just just understand the show and these guys more. Um, and maybe I'll like the movie more. But it's like the movie was disappointing because it just, unlike the Jackass movie versus the TV show, the movie in Jackass, the stunts they did, they went next level, right? You can't really go next level with what these guys are doing because they're not like doing stuff that are like stunts or anything. They're just putting themselves in embarrassing situations. And it's just the, the whole concept of the movie and like the, the kind of this faux plot thing structure that's supposed to tie the, the competitions together. is just kind of ridiculous. Like they could have just done a, an hour and a half version of the show with just some of their most epic most epic kind of situations cuz i'm sure there's situations where like the people that they're pranking end up elevating the the laughter in what they they're able to squeeze out of it and i it's i don't know it just I, i'm going to i'm going to give it another shot but i prefer the show far more than i do the movie um and there's a lot of show there so We'll see. We'll see. It's a uh, it's a fun it's it's a fun fun prank show. I don't know. I don't know if you haven't watched it. I I would definitely. I I don't know how you couldn't watch it. But if you have HBO Max, which I know not everybody has HBO Max, uh, but you know it's if you do, it's a fun show to put on, even in the background. Some of the the ways in which they're embarrassing each other. I mean. It, it's kind of like there's a lot of, of, of challenges where they have to say inappropriate things in front of kids, which is just just like cringy to watch. And then also there's times where it's like we're clearly not being comfortable with, you know, same sex kind of like men kind of being, uh, I don't know, touchy feely. I mean, there's a, a level of homophobia that kind of lends itself to the comedy. So some of the comedy, I would say, doesn't necessarily hold up or probably won't hold up in time uh, just because of how 
like I don't know it. I mean, but I I don't know. They they find a way. It's it's weird how they find a way to kind of get past certain things and uh, still make it funny. And I know they have writers. They have great writers. I know uh, Kim Congdon is a stand up comic that was a writer for them uh, for a, a couple seasons, I think. Um, so I would imagine the show even gets even better over the years because i mean if they've done eight seasons and i'm only on season three uh in most situations and most shows that last that long like even a seinfeld or whatever a lot of the times they don't really pick up steam until uh pick up speed until they hit like season three season four so i'm looking forward to watching more of it but uh i definitely wanted to share the fact that i love the show despite hating the movie uh and talk about them give them some some props because I do, I, 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 you know, I, all four of those guys, they seem like great guys, and it just, I just like so much of the show. It just kind of feels like it's comforting in a lot of ways, just to kind of feel some sense of nor- normalcy. Especially, I mean, watching it, you're like, oh, you can't do that now. You can't do that now. Like Murr has a big thing where he just puts things in his mouth, puts people's hands in his mouth, food, picks it off the floor. Just like a guy that would 100% get coronavirus immediately, uh, which is just so, it's kind of weird watching now that we're in this crazy time that we're in. But uh, check it out if you can on HBO Max and Practical Jokers. Make sure you support our sponsor, StationHouseCoffee.com, and follow Station House Coffee on Instagram for small batch, single origin, premium coffee, Brewed in Vermont and shipped directly to you. Support small business and get high-end coffee delivered directly to you by going to stationhousecoffee.com and tell them I sent you. Also, now's the time to sign up for your new cell phone service with Ting and get $25 in credit by using my link, inspireddisorder.com slash Ting. That's T-I-N-G. It's the same best coverage, same low rates, now with three coast-to-coast networks. Sign up now with Ting and get $25 of credit going to your new device or your new service through Ting. I love Ting. I use it. I, my bills for my cell phone are basically nothing. Uh, so sign up now. Go through my link, inspireddisorder.com slash Ting. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on IGTV, YouTube, and everywhere else podcasts are found. Binge the full week ad-free over at patreon.com slash inspireddisorder. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at inspireddisorder.com and follow the show at Ray Taylor Show on Instagram. Have a great day, everybody. Peace out!